Hey everybody, just uh, finishing getting set up, uh, but I'll be on in just a second. Happy Friday the 13th. Shout out to all you spooky weirdos out there. <laughs> I'll be on in just a sec. Uh, we're going to be playing with Jimbo for a little bit too, but in the meantime, if you can, go check out the new video that literally just came out on the YouTube channel. I linked it in the chat, and uh, yeah, so you should totally go check it out. And also give it a like, and maybe play it in the background so it gets more views. What? Who said that? Not me. <laughs> Alright, be on in just a sec.
All right, well, Jimbo's gone, so let's get started. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Whoa, hey, there's a new design for the polls on the chat. That's pretty cool. Uh, we just put in the chat what color you want me to make our pumpkin. Uh, the options are between orange, red, green, or white. I thought it'd be kind of fun to just throw some random colors in there. We'll see what happens. I know what I'm voting for. I'm going all classic. But we'll see what you guys vote for. Hey, everybody. How are you doing today? How is your Friday going? Happy Friday the 13th. Happy spooky, spooky day. <laughs> Hello, chat. Hey, Ivy. Hey, Tina. I saw, I thought I saw Cooper in there earlier. Yeah, there's Cooper. Twiz. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the, to the stream. Uh, I'm glad you guys enjoyed Jimbo. So, today... We are going to be crocheting a jack-o'-lantern. We're going to start by crocheting the pumpkin itself, and then we're going to make the jack-o'-lantern face itself using the new tutorial that literally just came out. Like, I think it came out less than half an hour ago. You can find it linked in the comments. I left it as a uh, as a pinned comment at the top. Um, if you want to go check it out, that'd be really cool. If you want to give it a like, that'd be really cool. It could use some love. Um, but regardless, we're going to be learning a little bit about what that video is all about in this video too. So let's talk about what you need for today's video. If you want to crochet along with me and then, uh, wait, what you need, how you can support the channel. Um, we'll do a little tiny spooky dance and then we'll get going. I just threw that spooky dance in there. I, I might've cashed a check that my butt can't handle. But we'll see. All right, so <laughs> first off, what you're going to need for this pattern. We're going to be making jack o lanterns today in the color of your choice. You can vote on it now. We're voting between orange, red, white, and green for the main color of your jack o lantern. You're going to need green regardless for the top of your pumpkin. But you're going to need uh, two colors of yarn. I'm going to be using worsted weight cotton yarn from our brand new seasonal crochet kit that we're going to be opening up in just a second but you're going to need the colors uh, green for your stem and then whatever your main color is going to be outside of that you're also going to need some materials that aren't actually provided in the holiday hooks kit if you want to turn it into a jack-o-lantern unfortunately I couldn't get these pieces in the kit I'm really sorry about that uh, I tried really hard but it just didn't work out in time so I hope you have some of these available if you do want to make a jack-o-lantern version uh, the materials the outside materials materials other than what's in the kit that you'll need is some black felt some pretty simple black felt and then you're either going to need some hot glue for gluing on the face but we're not going to be doing that today instead we're going to be using a needle felting tool and this is what the video tutorial is all about it teaches you how to use needle felting tools and how to needle felt your own jack-o-lantern on to any kind of crocheted pumpkin that you make you're also going to need, of course, a crochet hook. We're going to be using a size G four millimeter crochet hook today because that's the kind of yarn we'll be using and it works best with the yarn. Uh, yeah, so that's the crochet hook. You'll need a pair of scissors, of course. You'll need some stuffing. You'll need a darning needle, which unfortunately I don't have. Oh, here we go. Here's a darning needle. You'll need a darning needle with a crimped end. That's going to help sew in uh, the ends. And then obviously you're going to need the pattern. Now the pattern's actually totally free. You can find it at clubcrochet.com slash pumpkin um, or clubcrochet.com slash holiday hooks. Either one will get you there. Uh, and it's a totally free tutorial. It's got a video tutorial, a PDF, uh, and the written instructions. It's got the check marks to keep track of your progress. You get the gist. It's got everything that you need. Um, you can find it at clubcrochet.com slash holiday hooks or clubcrochet.com slash pumpkin links are in the description Okay, so that's what we're gonna be making today And that's all the materials you're gonna need now Let's talk about how you can support this channel if you'd like to so if you like what's going on here and you want it to keep happening It'd be great if you could support the channel the there are a bunch of different ways for supporting the channel um, Let's go to the cheapest to the uh, not so cheapest the cheapest, freest way to support is just like this video down below and subscribe to the channel. If you're not already subscribed, how did you find this video? But also, thanks for watching. Uh, you should really subscribe to the channel, though. It's a great way to support the channel, and 
we come out with live streams like this all the time, new video tutorials all the time. Um, so just hit that little like button down below and subscribe. Uh, outside of that, if you want to support monetarily, well, that's kind of a different story. And uh, thank you so much for being interested in supporting monetarily if you are. The probably best way to support monetarily is with the Club Crochet membership. Memberships get you early access to future patterns. They get access to exclusive library of tutorials. There's a whole bunch of patterns in the library. Um, that members get access to, like our giant candy corn from last week, which is now a member exclusive pattern. There is a miniature candy corn that just came out too, but that one's totally free. But this one does require a membership now to access. So if you want to get a membership, membership started only $5 a month. It's totally free to get started. You can get a free trial, cancel at any time. And again, it's a really, really good way to support the channel. Now, other ways you can support monetarily. You can purchase merch and pins in the store. Um, we've got a bunch of different kinds of pins from things like, hold on, I got, I got them all right here. We got, we got a cute little Jimbo pin that is, I mean, look at how adorable that little dude is. Super cute. We've got, uh, we've still got some leftover pins from our seasonal kits. Um, we've got a, uh, uh, like a cactus pin here. There's another one. have it on a card because I was just actually wearing it um, the under the sea pin is still available we got a bunch of pins available including a pin for this season's seasonal crochet kit which I can take out of our kit now this is probably I know I said the memberships are the best way to support the channel but this actually is probably the best way to support the channel if you're interested is with a seasonal crochet kit we have three seasonal crochet kits so far and we come out with a new one every single season so every three months we come out with another one it comes with all the materials you need to make everything that we're making throughout the entire season. So this comes with all the materials for everything that we're making in October, November, and December. So all the holidays we're going to be making out of this kit. Um, it's really cool. And let's go ahead and just get it opened up and look at what we need for today's video anyhow. Um, so it does come with a pin, especially uh, if you get it with an annual pass, it comes with our new our newest of our pins and the new pin is actually really cool because it's on the back of a magnet which is really cool because then you can use it as a refrigerator magnet you can use it as a stitch marker um or you can use it as a pin so it's really cool and it's actually bigger than the rest of the pins which is kind of nice too um okay so in this kit uh we kind of talked about it a lot last uh weeks in last week's live stream so i won't go through it too in too much detail but it does come with six balls of our exclusive amigurumi cotton yarn it comes with the stuffing the hooks um it comes with eyes and uh thread and extra black yarn and this fancy uh, paper thing that i'm not talking about right now because it's going to be used later pipe cleaners it comes with a lot of different stuff so Again, it's a great way to support the channel. You can find it. Uh, Cooper just posted it in the chat, but it's also available in the description. And if you use the code HOOKED, H-O-O-K-E-D, at checkout, you'll get your first seasonal crochet kit with free shipping. Um, we also still have seasonal crochet kits for the past two seasons. So we have an under the sea themed one and a plants, um, a photosynthesis themed one, um, both of which are going to be making what, you know, the what I just said. So we're going to make in like, uh, a bunch of different um, marine life in the under the sea one and a bunch of different plants in the photosynthesis one uh, yeah so I hope that that clears it up if you got any questions throughout this let me know in the chat I'm here and I'm reading it um like twiz who just said can I do a season can I do a holiday hooks season for a different season each year like spring could be New Year's Valentine's Mother's Day etc etc I like that idea, Twiz. I do have next year pretty solidly planned out, but I like that idea a lot, and I'm going to keep that in mind. Um, if, if At the very least, it would be nice to do uh, the smaller kits like that. So one thing that's coming out soon is we're going to be starting to do uh, smaller kits that aren't these gigantic seasonal crochet kits, but kind of uh, divvied up. So for example, the holiday hooks, I mean, the under the sea kit that we did last season, we're about to come out with a new kit that is a uh, whales. So it crochets all the different whales from the season. And it also comes with the club crochet membership like this one does. 
I don't think I explained that very well, but this also comes with the Club Crochet membership, so you get access to the entire library, so you can crochet different things if you don't want to make what's actually, uh, what this is actually designed for, for the kit. And it I tell you all the different alternative patterns that you can make. Okay, well, what color are we using for today's pattern? I am super curious. Let's see. Okay, you guys went all natural orange. I think that's probably for the best. So we're gonna be using our orange yarn in today's pattern. Um, and we'll also need a little bit of our forest green. You know, I replaced this white, but I don't think that feels fair. This is really the white for this kit because we used a little bit of it last week to make our finger puppet ghost. So let's keep that in the kit so that we have everything together and we can keep track of how much materials we use. Um, okay. So we're gonna need orange, we're gonna need our green. Uh, we won't need these other colors for today. So we'll go ahead and close this up and come back to it. By the way, this also acts as a yarn holder, which is just a kind of a cool thing. You can just throw the yarn in there and pull it out from the hole. Uh, it rips out of the um, the box itself. So it's just kind of a nice little, little uh, I don't know, hack? I don't know what to call that. Um, we're also going to be making our face today in however you guys want me to make the face So we're gonna be doing a few different options there for the face and now that the poll is over for the pumpkin Let's do a Q&A to say what kind of face do you want me to make? What kind of face? Okay so now there's a Q and A in the chat right now. Um, feel free to give me any uh, suggestions that you want of what kind of face you want me to add to the jack-o'-lantern. I'm gonna choose my four favorite when we finish the pumpkin up, and then we're going to vote on that uh, to see what kind of face to actually make with it. So do you want me to make you know a classic jack-o'-lantern face, or are we looking for something more spooky? Are we looking for something more silly? Um, any kind of advice, any kind of ideas that you have, let me know in that Q and A. Uh, you can just hit, there's a little, there should be a little thing in the chat right now that says, um, uh, ask a question, I think is what it, the button says, but you're not really asking a question. You're just giving me, uh, your opinion. Um, okay. So we're actually going to start with our green yarn today and let me pull up the PDF pattern. And what's really cool about this pumpkin is that it is no sewing required, so we can make it all in one piece. Oh, it feels so good to take a fresh label off of yarn. We're gonna save that the next one off for the when we get to the orange. But it just feels so nice, you know what I mean? How many Cosmo, hey Cosmo, how you doing? Cosmo asks, uh, how many pumpkins have I made? A lot. Uh, you can see, like, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the background here. I've got about four or five of them around the house. Um, and I've given my mom at least six different pumpkins. So, probably a couple dozen, maybe. Um, and now we're going to make it one more. Cooper! Thank you so much, Cooper, for reminding me. Uh, there is one last way you can support this channel, and I'm so sorry that I didn't mention it sooner, but if you'd like to, you can support with a tip. If you tip today, um, you can tip by going to clubcrochet.com slash tip. There's also a link in the description, or if you look in the chat, there's a little money icon. If you hit that icon and, uh, and support, you can support with a super chat. That works as well. Any kind of uh, support that you do, we're going to still be adding something to our giant um, fishbowl here. We're trying to fill this fishbowl up with items. So Cooper has supported today, so we're gonna add something to the background and at the end of the live stream, we're gonna add it to our fishbowl and see how close we are to filling it up. Once this is filled up all the way to the top, we're going to uh, be doing a really big giveaway. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I thought it was kind of a nice way to like, you know, give back. And Cooper for today, okay, we need to add a, a sea critter for Mr. Cooper. You know, we should add a sea critter that's wearing a costume of some kind, right? We, I think we already have our demon in here, don't we? Yeah, we already have our demon and the angel. Um, what if we did the... 
You know what? What if we added our... Um, let's see, let's see. Oh, oh, okay, wait, wait. I got a good idea. I got a good idea. Let's get... Let's get Critter in here. Let's see what it's doing. Yes. Okay, this is what we're going to do for you, Cooper. We're going to do a dressed up whale. So, we've got our pink whale, which, I mean, he's... <laughs> It's cute. I mean, we're not gonna lie. This is an adorable pattern, but it'd be even cuter with a witch hat. So we're gonna go ahead and add our witch hat on top of this adorable pink whale here, and we'll put it in the background for you, Cooper. And it's gonna be watching us throughout the live stream. At the end, we'll add it to our collection. Thank you for your support, Cooper. I really, really appreciate it. Everybody, uh, just quick shout out in general. Cooper not only is great at just being awesome and supporting, but also he's our admin today. So, uh, it, or our moderator rather, rather. So he's helping keep the chat going and keeping links in the chat. And he's just way cool. So super big thanks to Cooper uh, for being here and helping out. Um, okay. Is this going to have a mini groomy pattern too? I was working on a mini groomy uh, pumpkin. It's kind of tough though to get the shaping right. Uh, but I have been working on it. Um, but I have so many other ones that are already ready to go that I'm like, okay, maybe I should put my effort into the ones that are already done rather than making a new, another new mini groomy pattern. But I am working on it. Uh, so yes, the, the answer is, uh, there's a high likelihood it'll be done in time, but, uh, I just have so many different other patterns that I'm working on right now that I feel like I have to pick and choose a little bit and I might need to drop the mini groomy pumpkin until next year. Just because there's just, there's only so many days in October, you know? And then after October, it's like no one wants to make pumpkins anymore. <laughs> it's kind of true. All right, so we are making the stem for a pumpkin now. And hey, in the chat, anybody else making pumpkins? What are you guys making today? Is anybody else making a jack-o'-lantern along with us? Let's see, we, oh wait, we don't want to do that one. This one right here. And we want to work around our tail end as we go. I just made one of these pumpkins, so I should remember how to do it. I think we'll probably do, maybe we can do like an extra long uh, stem today. The only reason I say that is because I don't really have any, well, I guess I do actually. They're all kind of long stems. We'll just keep making the stem as long as we want it to be. How about that? One, two, three. Until we're satisfied with how long the stem is. Is Jimbo in his throne? No, he's not. Of course he's not. It doesn't even say cat cam on there. Hold on. I just realized. this and this or else no one's gonna know what that weird brown blob in the corner even is <laughs> Jill is making a pumpkin with us thank you thank you for letting me know Jill good we got Jill making a pumpkin twiz twiz is making a pumpkin pie hi tag look at that I spit I said your name right. I watched a video the other day uh, about um, Irish names, and I found out that Tig's name is actually Irish. At least I think it is. Let me know, Tig. Are you Irish? Oh, Amy, thank you. So, yeah, we got Joe making a pumpkin. Nove is making a baby Groot right now. That's pretty cool. Ooh! Katrina wants a mini castle pattern to go with the mini goblin. And they've already made three pumpkins. Wow, that's a lot of pumpkins. Yeah, we, we'll have basically a, a pumpkin patch worth of pumpkins by the end of this. Yeah. 
and you made the candy corn. I, you know, I'm really, the candy corn one was just like a really quick one, but wait till you see the mini skull. Um, Tyg is talking about it right now in the chat. The mini skull pattern is way cool. Um, I need to record it this weekend along with our next big pattern, um, which uh, is going to be, well, I'll keep it a surprise. You know what, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll show you what the next big pattern is going to be if this video gets, let's see, what are we at? Oh, it's already at 73. I'll tell you what, if this video gets 125 likes by the end of the stream, so that's a pretty reasonable, reasonable goal. So we're currently at 75. Yes, Jimbo. Hi, Jiminy. I thought we played. Didn't we play a little bit? Yeah, not enough. Okay, well, too bad, bud. Jimbo wants to play, and, and I'm sorry, buddy. We are in the middle of crocheting. After we're done crocheting, we can hang out a little bit. Um, I don't remember what I was saying. Coffee is still is still finding its way into my bloodstream right now. I was up till four last night getting prepped the uh, the video tutorial that just came out. There we go. See, the stem is coming together. Pretty easy. But yeah, if we get, a, oh, that's what it was. If we get 125 uh, likes, I'll show you what the next pattern that's coming out is. Um, I think you'll, I think you'll dig it though. More coffee for me. But yeah, I gotta record the next tutorials this weekend. And then um, I'm trying to get ahead of schedule, but every time I do that, I always goof it up and then don't get ahead of schedule. Tina, oh my God, Tina, thank you so much for your support. Let's add something to the background for you, Tina. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's go with, um, let's go with something else that's dressed up. You know, like, like, we'll keep that theme going. We've got a little tiny top hat here. What if we had this little top hat onto a little critter? Let's see, what do we got? You know, it's funny, I made this like whole, made a ridiculous amount of these little miniatures. Let's do another pink one with a little top hat on it. <laughs> that top hat is too big for him, but you know what? It's kind of cute. We'll add this to the background for you, Tina. Oh my gosh, that's actually so cute. I love that. Thank you for your support, Tina. I really appreciate it. Uh, is the mini skull pattern going to be free? You're excited to try it. I think that uh, I haven't really thought that part through. Maybe you could help me out right now, actually, with that. So I've been kind of thinking about how to, like, make patterns free in the future and how, like, what patterns to make free, what patterns not to make free. Because I have a really difficult time figuring it out, you know, especially when it comes to these mini ones. Um, because, like, you know, I can't make every pattern free. That, that Or else I can't keep doing this. Um, so I need to kind of figure out how to do that, especially with when it comes to these mini Gurumis. Because I don't really feel, it doesn't feel fair to, like, sell the patterns individually when they're that tiny. Because they're just so small. So what I'm currently debating is making the mini skull video tutorial free, but keeping the PDF and written pattern behind a membership or a purchase for like a dollar. That's kind of what I'm thinking is like making it a really low price to purchase it. Maybe one dollar, maybe a dollar fifty or something. Um, but if you have a membership, you can access the pattern, the written instructions too. I don't know. That's kind of what I was thinking. Does that seem fair to you? 
Let me know. Let me know. And do you have any opinions when it comes to that? Um, because I could really use some advice when it comes to like how to sell my patterns, especially the mini groomy ones. Yes, that's right. Jack. Yeah. Actually, okay. Tina. Never mind. Never mind. I I'll save it. I'm going to. I have other things that are in the in the cooker right now that I'm working on, but I'm going to save it because it's not ready to share yet. Um, you could do the mini grooming patterns as a bundle. Yeah, I definitely think that's going to happen. Um, I'll, I'll for sure do a bundle. Uh, I think we're going to do like a holiday hooks bundle, but the problem is like, I wish that that bundle was already ready, but it'll include like, you know, the little, we'll do a little goblin, the, the skull, um, the, what else? What, the the candy corn and a little ghost. I really wanted to get five Halloween themed ones done, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it in time. Yeah. Yeah, I see that's exactly what I'm saying, Amy. It's like it's really hard because it does take it takes a lot of time to come up with to test it out to make sure it's all right and to do like a video tutorial, edit the video, create the thumbnails, do all the pictures, create the PDF for it, building it on the website, maintaining the website. Like there's there's a lot of time and money that goes into every single one of these patterns that I've been making. And like, yes, I've kind of streamlined the process a little bit because I've made so many that it, it does make things a little bit easier for me, but that doesn't mean that I'm not putting the work in. So I just have a really hard time, like trying to find out like how, like what financially is fair for these crochet patterns and what financially like would make sense for people to actually purchase. Cause I'm not going to sell like that many pattern for like five bucks for like a pattern that's only 40 stitches. Um, yeah. So I'm still kind of like, thinking it through oh Katrina thank you for that um the music is actually quite quiet thank you for letting me know let me turn it up a little bit I was actually watching the last stream to check how loud the music was and I was like wow that you can barely even hear the music I turned it up a little bit is that too low still to set negative 6.8 decibels. Let's see how that sounds. Um, let me know. Okay, how do we feel about the stem for this pumpkin? I feel like we're at the point where it's either you gotta get bigger with the stem or we need to get, or we need to stop here. So we either need to go like really big so that it can like twist around itself or, you know what, let's just stop here. We got a lot more crochet to still do, right? So let's, let's move on now from the stem to the vine. And the vine, we can make it kind of long, though. Three, four. Ten. Fifteen. Let's go pretty long. Because I want it to curl up a bunch, you know? And if this were to curl up a bunch, it would look like... One, two, see like that's not enough. Let's do, let's do five more. Five more chains seems fair. One. Does the YouTube videos, do the YouTube videos bring people to your website? Yeah, they do. Um, Da, 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 da. That is better for the music. Okay, cool. Um. Uh, the what did some? Oh, the YouTube videos. YouTube videos do bring people to the website at least some. What? Um. Yeah, they do. They do bring people over there. Uh, because I mean, let's be honest. I like I like video tutorials, obviously, to make sure I don't mess up stitches, and it's just really helpful. But when I've already crocheted something, I don't really want the video tutorials as much as I want the written instructions. So that brings people to my 
uh, website pretty well too. It's like, okay, well, now I want the written instructions, so they're gonna go to the site. And a lot of the written instructions are still free on the site, they just require an account, so. Um, uh, someone asked, uh, can, can I attempt to say your name? Okay, I will try to say your name, even though they're, can we, Adjurified, Adjurified? Adrified? Did I say your name right? Let me know. Am I going to be doing a movie night this month? Ooh, good question, Tig. Let's see. Am I going to do a movie night this month? We probably won't be doing one this month, but I do like the idea of doing a movie night this uh, this season. So maybe in November or um, December we'll do a movie night. I know November we're going to be doing a lot of uh, burbs. Well, we won't do a lot of burbs, but we're definitely going to do a burb uh, live stream because it'll be our burb day. That's what we call it when it's our um, uh, when it's Club Crochet is going to. I think it's going to be our sixth birthday, like the Club Crochet's sixth birthday. I call it the burb day because you know it sounds like birthday. So we're going to be doing for sure a special live stream then. That's a long vine. But it'll be good because we're just going to curl it up like this when it when we get to the point. And I really like it when the vine is like really curly and long cuz it just it looks really fun. Uh, okay, let's continue on though and we're going to be working with our orange yarn. Here comes the moment of truth, ready? Oh. It just makes that sound. This is just, this is Club Crochet Amigurumi Cotton Yarn. It just makes that sound. That's that's our slogan. It just makes that sound. Um, I've actually been trying out uh, doing patterns where I need to add or, like a new color of yarn, but without doing a slip knot. So let's go ahead and do that in this one. So I'm gonna go into the next stitch here and then I'll make it a little loop, pull the loop through and then chain one around that like this to keep it in place yeah nice and then we're gonna work into the same stitch and around our two color tail ends as we go there we go all right so it begins the body of the pumpkin now we're just gonna be doing a we might do large. We might go up to large pumpkin today. Um, what I have done uh, as of today is I updated the um, pumpkin pattern. I should have said that in the in the beginning. I've just updated the pumpkin pattern to include a bunch of new features. Um, yeah, I guess we can cut it there. We just need to have the first stitch in. Um, so here's what I did. I'm, I added a new PDF for the pumpkin pattern uh, to make it match with the seasonal crochet kit. So it's a brand new shiny sparkly PDF pattern uh, with new pictures, uh, you know, the check marks to keep track of progress, stuff like that. Um, I also added four new customization options so that you can make your pumpkin anywhere between a, uh, I did a small pumpkin and then a medium pumpkin, and then a large pumpkin, and then this one is the gigantic pumpkin. So I added like new size options in the tutorial. And then I also added uh, the new instructions for how to make a jack-o'-lantern face. So those are all like, I added, I, I really spruced it up pretty well. I, I'm pretty happy with the new update. Um, I hope you guys like it. Because I made the pumpkin pattern last year, so I was like, you know what? It's time for it to get a little facelift. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, we are on track here. So in this video, we're going to be making the large pumpkin. Um, I'm not going to do the gigantic one because it's just, it takes a second. Because, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of crocheting that is involved in it. Go one, and then we're gonna do two right here. There we go. Okay, so I'm on round eight now. If you are crocheting along with me. Eight, 
is yes it is i know where did the year go right crafty kitten i can't believe that it's already been another year of club crochet it's it's going very very fast Especially this year. This year went quicker than any other year in the past, I have to say. How long does it usually take for me to come up with a pattern? I mean, it depends on the pattern. Sometimes I'm like on fire and it's like, boom, bam, one time, it takes me an hour. I'm, I've come up with the pattern and it's already pretty good. But usually the process is I have to crochet the pattern first and then I... Uh, and that's like my prototype and then I do rough drafts and and test it out make it a bunch uh, then I work on the PDF so usually it takes me about like a two like a couple of weeks um, between like just making it a bunch and testing it out a lot and making sure that everything is perfect uh, before I do the video tutorial then the video tutorial takes a little bit of time so I would say on average around oh Okay, one second. Jimbo wants out. Oh, okay. Just got sent. Thank you. Um, so yeah, it depends on the pattern. Uh, and it depends on, I guess, like how motivated I am to do the pattern. I have been flying this week, though. I, I'm not going to show you all the ones I've been working on because I've been, I've got like a new project in the works. Secret project. Um, but... I've made three patterns in three days uh, this week, so it's been a very busy week for me. Do my patterns have to be tech edited? Um, yes, a lot of them are tech edited. Um, I actually am the one that usually does the tech editing. Uh, I sometimes have other people help out. I've got a few tech editors that help. Um, if you're interested in helping out, I would be interested in, in yeah, you helping. Uh, I know we do a lot of rough draft patterns where I reach out and um, it, it's essentially like um, what's it, like community uh, tech editing. But sometimes the patterns are so tiny that it's just not even worth tech editing. And I know that I wrote it right because I've crocheted it like 15 times by then. Um, the video tutorials help out a lot too with the tech editing because while I'm recording the video tutorial, usually what I do is like, I do my best to basically forget the pattern completely um, and pretend I've never made it before and just do it reading the, t reading the PDF that I wrote stitch by stitch. And sometimes when I'm recording the video tutorial, it's a really good way to get out all the little bumps and all the little uh, problems with the PDF. So yeah, sometimes what I do is like, I'll be recording a video tutorial and I'll be like on round six and I'll be like for rounds, like I'll, I'll do it for this example. So I'm on round nine, I think. No, I'm on round 10. Um, so if I were to be doing like this video tutorial, Sometimes I'll be like, for round 10, single crochet three times and then increase once, repeating six times around to get to 30 stitches around. Oh, that doesn't seem right. Hmm. And like, I'll do that in the video. I'll be like, that's not right. And I'll be like looking at it a little bit. I'll be like, okay, hold on. And I'll go back. I'll rewrite the pattern, export it, re-export it. Then uh, start the video up at that round again and then continue on so that that sometimes helps out a lot when it comes to the editing part to make sure that like everything is exactly correct is I'll just like just do it raw <laughs> like as if I had never made this pattern before in my life um, for the most part though I'm usually I've usually crocheted the pattern at least like five four or five times before I even record the video tutorial just to make sure that I have it you know, perfect and the written instructions are perfect. Everything is like all ready to go because I can fix a PDF. I can fix the written instructions on the website, but I cannot fix a video tutorial. I can't splice in new content in there. So it needs to be right um, when I do a video tutorial because I can't really make new updates to it 
without um, doing a whole new video. Jimbo, Jimbo just opened the door. Yes, you are a wild child today. Hi, buddy. I can't let you eat the yarn, though. I'm so sorry. All right, so that's, that was round 10. We're going up to large, so we want to do one more round of growth, and then we can go up to large. Um, I'm going to do this also while we're at it. I'm going to take a little pipe cleaner here. Um, I have like half of a pipe cleaner. There are pipe cleaners that are included in the kits. Um, most of the kits I include pipe cleaners in. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to twist this half a pipe cleaner up. And the reason is because I want to make the stem of our pumpkin. Wow, dude, this cat right now is wild. Um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm twisting this up so that it makes an extra, like, um, extra secure uh, stem that we can stuff it into the stem so that we can twist the stem around in different positions. So that'll be kind of fun. Oh, thank you, Lisa. How do I choose the music? That's a good question. Um, so usually the music is video game music because I really like video games. I'm, I'm a big time gamer boy. Um, always have been. And um, yeah, so usually what I do is I look up like specific theme. Um, in this case, we are in like, I think it is um, fall, you know, like uh, autumn or fall themed music. And then I look up uh, fall themed music Nintendo because I really like Nintendo music specifically. I think it really works with the, the vibe of uh, the videos. Um, and then obviously I listen through it before I decide, yeah, that'll work. Um, video game music works really well because it's very rare that I'll get a cease and desist for video game music because people live stream video games all the time. So it works out really well for the streaming too. Not to mention like the vibe is like perfect. Yes, yeah, you definitely recognize some Animal Crossing. Um, if you watch my video tutorials, you'll probably hear a decent amount of Animal Crossing. Oh my god, the cat is wild right now. Um, uh, because I love, an honestly, Animal Crossing music is like the vibe for the channel, in my opinion. Like, it's just perfectly, like, that is what I want to be that sound is what I'm trying to like give off in my video tutorials and my live streams. It's like a chill atmosphere that's very like, oh my gosh, did you hear that? Jimbo, so Jimbo does this thing all the time uh, where he'll, he gets a lot of boogers because he, uh, so, so I'm sorry already. Uh, this is going to be a t uh, too much information thing. So if this is gross, sorry. Uh, but Jimbo has, um, he's got cat herpes, which uh, a lot of cats have it. I think it's like a ridiculous amount of cats get it because it just runs rampant in the shelters and stuff where we got Jimbo. And um, it affects cats in different ways. But for Jimbo, it gives him a lot of boogers. He's like overly boogery. Um, he's always, he's always got boogers filling his nose up. So he sneezes all the time and he does this noise where he goes <laughs> like all the time it's it's really really scary in the middle of the night like 3 a.m you'll be in bed trying to sleep and then you'll just hear coming into the room and you're like what the heck is that sound and then he's just <laughs> you're like oh this is disgusting and then he'll jump on your head and then sneeze in your hair it's vile, but also kind of adorable in its own way. <laughs> it's kind of really cute. I feel glorious. Katie, can you clean my room? Wow, what a name. Uh, what is going on? Can someone tell me? Yes, yeah, so we are currently crocheting a pumpkin. This is a live crochet along uh, where we're making, um, we're actually making a jack-o'-lantern, I should say, but right now we're making the pumpkin part of the jack-o'-lantern. And then we're gonna fix it up and make a um, it into a jack o' lantern afterwards. Uh, okay, I think that is large size. 
Should have 36 stitches around now. Five, six. Yeah. So now we just have at least like 12 rounds of just single crochet. So we're just going to crochet around for quite a lot of rounds. So let's chat, guys. Let's hang out. Um, but yeah, that is that is currently what uh, what we're doing right now. I'm just hanging. What music do I use for my shorts? Um, usually it's Animal Crossing music. I, I really like using Animal Crossing music for my shorts. Um, for the most recent short, for the uh, the what was the 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 candy corn for the candy corn short, I used uh, like a song from Animal Crossing from the pro the prologue of Animal Crossing. Like it's like not even in the main game. I mean, it is in the main game, but it's in like the tutorial, like the last part of the tutorial song. And it was just the perfect song for the video. And I was like, yes, this one. Sometimes it takes a while to find the right music for it. And especially like to find the right um, like levels and stuff for the music. Uh, America says that you're surprised that I can talk, read, and knit. I'm not knitting, but I'm crocheting, but I get what you're saying. At the same time, uh, yeah, I, I found that after doing these live streams for, how long, guys, how long am I doing these streams for? At least like five years, right? Six years, maybe? I think like six years, probably. I, I've been doing them like pretty much weekly now. I've gotten really, really good at com compartmentalizing my crochet into like one side of my brain so that I can just consistently, my hands are doing the work and my, my like one side of my brain is doing the, is doing the whole thinky bits when it comes to crochet. And then my other side of the brain can have a whole conversation, can read, can talk, do whatever. It's just like practice, practice, practice. Like not, not on purpose. Like, you know, I'm not like actively going out here trying to practice crocheting without thinking about the crochet, but also just by doing it every single week for five years now, it's, uh, yeah, just become kind of like second nature to me. Oh, dude, Zoe, that's that's a bummer. I'm sorry about that. You got all these creepy crochets just lying around unsold. Bummer. Well, I mean, you could do your own market. Do you sell them on Etsy? Do you sell them on, on the internet at all? I guess that's got to be kind of hard for you, right? Because of, cause, because of Canada, maybe? Is it difficult to, like, sell online because of Canada? Because of, like, shipping costs, maybe? I don't know. I'm curious. I mean, worst case scenario, you've got a lot of Christmas gifts that are probably really creepy but kind of really unique so at least there's that we should do a you know what we should do maybe we can do that this year well i don't know this this might be a bit this might be a bit tough to do this year but what would be really cool to do um with the community is a like a secret santa where everybody gets a different um person and they and we ship each other like crocheted gifts That could be really, really fun. Or even just materials, something like that. That could be super duper fun. Maybe I could do it in time. I'll try. Right now we're working on, um, I'm working on a, uh, what's it called? An advent calendar. We're doing an advent calendar on the website this year for Christmas. Um, so that every day you can come back to the website and open a different door and it'll give you a new gift like a new pattern or something like that. So like right now I'm putting a lot of effort and thought into that, but uh, they're not so family friendly items. Oh my gosh, Zoe, I, I kind of want to see. <laughs> what did you make, dude? Oh my God, I want to see. Did you use that one that one pattern that you, you introduced me to with the... Um, you know your like giant cactus that you made? 
for the cactus like challenge. I think you were the one that made the giant cactus, right? The one, the one with like the bodacious bod. Did you make any creepy crochet with that bod? That would be really funny. I really like that artist, by the way. Thank you for introducing me to them um, because I really like seeing all their crochet online. I can't remember what their name is, but they're a very talented crochet artist that makes like, like, uh, they make like plant life, but that is, um, it's usually mushrooms, but they're like, they're like sprites with like sexy bods. And it's, it's really funny. They look really, really funny. <laughs> like big booties and stuff. Yeah, that's exactly what it's going to be, Michelle. Yeah, it's going to be a virtual advent calendar um, for anybody that has an account on the website. So it's going to be kind of like a nice little thing for um, free accounts uh, and membership accounts. We're going to also be doing things like uh, there's going to be a gift card in the advent calendar on one day. There's going to be um, coupons uh, and... Uh, like a free shipping coupon and stuff like that so yeah I thought it'd be kind of fun it's just like you know you just have to keep coming back every day to get the next prize well uh, it's gonna be 24 days actually I, instead of doing 12 days of Christmas we're doing a 24 day advent calendar because I'm crazy and wanted to give away a bunch of stuff I don't know <laughs> should be fun though You made trunken heads and naked witchy ladies that are just bit too spooky and nude. Oh my gosh, Zoe, I want to see. Send me a pic. S send me something on, on Instagram or on Discord. That's super cool. Yeah, see, that's the problem. It's, it's, uh, we would have to do a secret Santa where, like, you would have to say... You know what? We maybe we could like, maybe we could like filter it in, Cooper, so that it's like, it's like, what country are you from? Are you okay with shipping outside of your country? Are you you're okay with shipping domestically? I mean internationally. Um. Are and then, like, maybe we could even say like a. You know, like a, there's a weight limit. Or something to keep the cost down yeah that's that's interesting though I didn't think about the whole shipping part I'll think that through but I do think it would be really fun to do it to do a secret Santa I think that would be just a really just a fun thing to do in general yeah let me let me noodle with that idea if we don't do it this year I'll definitely do something next year I think I do have enough time to set that up though Maybe. I don't know. I've got a lot going on. Austin! How you doing, Austin? Ooh, cool. We got an actual, like, a crochet question here. All right. Austin says, Hey, I'm new to crocheting, and I've been making a baby blanket with, I'm pretty sure, double stitches. I'm guessing you mean double crochet stitches. And it's supposed to grow with you. It's supposed to be a grow with you blanket, but I don't know how to crochet a border any advice oh interesting question okay so so you're basically saying that you have a big like flat crocheted piece that is made with double crochet stitches and you want to know how to add a border to that cool I can help with that all right so the way I would do that if I were you is I would do single crochet stitches in the for the border the what I would do is every stitch along the top and bottom of the square I would just do one single crochet per stitch so it'd be like if you had if your blanket is like a hundred stitches long I do a hundred stitches across and then going up I would do two single crochets in around the side of the the chain or the double crochet at the end of the rounds so that you do two for each double crochet all the way up the blanket um, that's going to give you, like, that should be an even amount of stitches so that it, like, stays straight. Uh, and then when you get to the corners of the piece, I would do two stitches in uh, in the corner stitches of the, um, of the blanket as well. So I do, basically, you finish the, the last round of double crochets. 
I would turn, chain one, or change my color if, if you wanted to do a different color for the border. And then I just single crochet all the way back across that row. Do two single crochets into the last stitch of that row so that it turns. You might want to do, you might even do more than two. You might do two in that one and then two in the next, uh, into the next corner so that it makes it more of a corner. And then you're going to crochet all the way back down uh, the side of the blanket to get across to um, the chains that you started the blanket with. And then you're going to crochet back across and then up, up it. Um, I think single crochets are usually pretty good for edging on a blanket. You can do uh, more stitches. You can do double crochets instead, or you could do half double crochets. Um, half double crochets actually might be pretty nice also. Uh, another option is you could just do slip stitches across all of them. It'll make less of a border and more of like a, like a stripe kind of around the edge. Um, you could also add things like tassels to the ends of your blanket. That could be pretty fun. Uh, I do have to say, congratulations. You've already done the hardest part, uh, which is crocheting a blanket. That's wild. I've only ever made like a quarter of a blanket because I get so, like, I just, you know, I don't know if I have ADHD, but it's a pretty high likelihood that I do. And, um, See, I just forgot what I was saying. Um, and uh, I have a really hard time crocheting the same thing for a really, really long time. I get just like distracted. Ooh, that's a really good tip, Amy. That might be a little bit too advanced uh, for Austin, but maybe not. Um, Amy has the idea of doing scalloped edges on the edges on the border of your blanket that's a great idea a scalloped edge is basically you are you would be doing like anywhere between three and eight double crochets or triple crochets into one stitch so that it would create like basically a little like kind of like a a rounded edge and then you'll do the same thing you'll skip two stitches and then do it again so you'd like you basically here you know what i'll do it right here i'll show you what a scalloped edge is so if i'm on the edge here and i'll just take these stitches out and i want to do a scalloped edge on all the edges of this piece like let's say i wanted to make it like i don't know have a scalloped edge basically what i do is i would do double crochets i would skip a stitch and i do like so let's do like four double crochets skip one and do like four double crochets into this stitch here one two three yeah we'll do four just to just to give you an example you can do any amount though that you want that works really good for your piece so see how i just do a bunch and it makes like a rounded circle and then I'll skip another stitch and then do a slip stitch into the one after. So I'll skip this one and do a slip stitch right here into this one, like that. And then I'll just repeat that again. So we'll do skip one right here. We'll do four double crochets again. One, two, three, and four. And then I'd skip one and do a slip stitch into the next one right here. And it's gonna create this little bloop, bloop, bloop around the whole edge, which is really cute when, it, when you make it for a blanket. What you can actually also do, um, yeah, like shells, exactly. What you can also do uh, is you can actually make a whole blanket using these scallop shells by doing slip stitches at the top of these and then double crochet like the, another scallop where the the down part of the scallop is so it kind of like makes this really cool pattern throughout your entire piece um that's the only way i've ever done a blanket actually is with uh using scallop stitches the whole way through um yeah but that, that actually is a pretty fun idea for the edging of a blanket um and you can add little tassels to the each of the scallops too that could be kind of fun it might be that might be a little difficult especially if you are a beginner but it would be really cool looking i'm sure and i'll tell you what doing scallops is a lot of fun it's a lot more fun in my opinion than just doing double crochets all the way around 
or just doing single crochets all the way around. So yeah, there's a that's a pretty good amount of of uh, of tips there. Thank you for the suggestion there, Amy. That was that was a really good idea. Yeah, doing scalloped edging or using scallops for a blanket is like way way fun. Like doing all your entire round in scallops. I actually have a tutorial somewhere on my old site, louisloops.com. There was a tutorial for how to make a blanket using that scalloped edging thing. So maybe I'll have to bring that over to Club Crochet eventually. Yeah, pumpkin with the scalloped cape, yep. Um, I just realized we have our green yarn here that we don't really need to work with anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back. And you know what, let's put it, oh, actually we're gonna need it again when it comes to the leaf. So I'll put it to the side there. Um, also, what what suggestions do you guys have here? We got so so far in the suggestions for the face to add, we have a while, by the way. So you can still add your suggestions in there. Um, if you want to add your suggestions for how, like what kind of jack o' lantern face you want us to make um, to add to our pumpkin, go ahead and hit the little QA. Uh, it should be at the top of the chat there, and you can add any suggestions that you want. Um, I'm gonna choose my top four, and then we're gonna vote on the top four to see what kind of face to make. Um, so far, we've got options like sticking a tongue out, uh, a grumpy face, like it's a grumpkin. <laughs> I like that, actually. It's like a grumpkin is a really fun name. Uh, a cat face, I like that. Shark, uh, ooh, shark teeth, that's kind of fun. What? <laughs> Katie, can you clean my room? Said, what's going on? <laughs> oh, a nose ring, dude, Zoe. Zoe's out here spitting ideas like it's nothing. Zoe comes, Zoe comes hot with good ideas. She said, we should give it a nose ring like a punkkin. I like it. I like that one a lot. A punkkin? Heck yes, dude. That's a great idea. I think that's going in the top four personally, but we'll see. Give me other suggestions. Vampire teeth, that's a good idea, Amy. I like that. I like vampire teeth. I wish I could see that chat on here, but I, I can't for some reason. Legacy patterns. Ooh, that's a good idea. I like that idea, Katrina. That's a that's an easy way for me to do that. Um, oh, actually, you know what? While we're in this chat, I do have a good question for you guys. And and when I ask you these questions, by the way, please like give me your honest opinion. I'm not going to be offended ever if you give me honest opinions in the chat. Like, you don't have to like say something because you think it's something I want to hear. I really am looking for like true true. Uh, opinions here um so one question that i've been rattling through in my head is every single pattern on the website i include a video tutorial for which is really cool and uh really makes things like way easy for crocheting but it does mean that it takes me significantly longer like three times at least as long to make a pattern for the website than I could do. So I could like be whipping out patterns like they're nothing if I didn't have to do video tutorials. So my question is, do you think there's space on the website for a place where uh, like I can do, I can add tutorials in that don't have video tutorials um, that are only like the written instructions? Uh, like how, do you think that's okay? Do you think that would be weird on the website? Do you think I should like, do you think I would have to put like a big caveat there or should I make it very clear what patterns do have video tutorials? Um, the reason I'm asking is I'm work currently working on a big project where it has just a, like a lot of patterns in it and I don't have to make video tutorials for these projects, um, but I'm allowed to like put them on my website um, after the project is finished. And I don't know if I want to go back and do video tutorials for every single one of them because there's a lot of them. So yeah, I guess that's my basically, that's my question there is like, how relevant are video tutorials for you when it comes to crochet pattern? 
um, for especially for club crochet patterns. So like, let's go with like this. Like, how often do you? You know what? Let's do a poll. Let's do a poll. That that'll help me out big time. So let's go back here. I I, I don't know if I can do a poll at the same time. Maybe I can. And, oh, I can do a poll. Okay. How often? There's the poll. I really would love your opinion here. Um, the poll is how often do you use video tutorials for club crochet patterns? Do you use it every time, sometimes, rarely, or never? So, you know, like anywhere between that. Um, please, any any feedback there, uh, go ahead and fill that, that little poll out. I'm just really curious of how often video tutorials are being used for my patterns. Uh, especially for the ones that are like membership exclusive ones that aren't just video tutorials here on the website. Thank you for that, Lisa. I appreciate that feedback. Lisa says, if we can read, we can figure it out. Go easy on yourself. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, Lisa says it's totally cool. Uh, Miss Weasel says, heck yeah, patterns without tutorials are fine. Tina uses the video tutorials every time. Yeah, I I totally get that too. Like, that, I think that's one of the biggest benefits to Club Crochet is that you can guarantee that every pattern has a video tutorial, at least currently. But my, like... My library could be so much bigger if I didn't, if I wasn't required to do video tutorials for every single one of them. But also, you know, I don't know. Yeah, beginners definitely appreciate them for sure. Yeah, maybe having a different section or an icon similar to the membership icon. I, that's what I was thinking actually, Cooper, is I was thinking like maybe every pattern has like a series of icons on it that tell you what that's, what like is included in this pattern. So there's like, you know, there's one for if it has a downloadable PDF, one for a lefty video, one for, I mean, one for a left-handed tutorial, one for the video tutorial, and one for just like the written instructions or something. Like maybe putting icons on stuff might help. Cooper says they only use the videos for sewing placement. Interesting. And Lisa wants just more patterns in general. Yeah, see, like, I could be popping out patterns like they're nothing if they were... If I didn't have to worry too much about a video tutorial aspect to it. But also, I, you know, it's not that video tutorials aren't going to be around. I'm going to keep doing video tutorials for sure. Uh, it's just, like, every now and then I come up with a pattern that I'm like... <sighs> this is going to take me forever to finish because I need to do a video and I really want to get it out now. Yeah, and I think Crazy Town, that's exactly what I mean. It's like video tutorials are going to be really important if they are advanced patterns, but if sometimes for beginner patterns, like they're just so simple, why would you need a video tutorial for it, you know? if you already know how to crochet. But. Okay. Yeah, that could, that's a great idea, Katrina. Like a video tutorial that's like coming out later so that way I could come out with the pattern a little like sooner and then use the video tutorial to kind of like boost it up or I could do it like yeah like I could kind of be releasing more like um you know preview patterns Katrina that could work out too where it's like okay like these five patterns here 
are labeled as preview patterns or because like they don't have the video tutorial so they're not like ready for ready to be like a fully published club crochet pattern or something uh, tina jack where are you are you hungry jack where are you mm, he might be rummaging around outside well we'll look for him later tina we'll look for him later Okay, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we're a little bit farther than halfway done with the large pumpkin. We want to do a few more rounds, though. We want a little bit of height there. Um, yeah, and let's end this poll real quick. Okay, so we got somewhere between... Okay, so, okay, so half the people say sometimes which is more than rarely and even rarely has 20 percent and every time has like the second highest vote so it seems like video tours are actually really you guys find video tours really useful that's good to know only 10 percent of people said never which is kind of crazy um can you see how much traffic each pattern gets and base the video priorities based on that yeah, definitely. Um, it's kind of hard for me to tell trap like the videos. One great thing about doing all these video tutorials is that I do get really, really good data from YouTube about like how many people watch the video, how many people click links, how many people are like how far in the video are you watching? Like what parts of the video are you watching? Um, it also helps with the search algorithm. So like Google search will put my um, tutorials higher up if there are video tutorials because they own YouTube. So they put my tutorials higher up on the search results, um, which is nice. So yeah, that definitely is an aspect when it comes to doing tutorials is like, if I do a video tutorial, it will get more attention just naturally by it being, um, uh, you know, by having like a video element to it. Uh, Jill, Jack Gurgle is a um, a crocheted goblin puppet that I have made uh, that uh, we're just we're just big fans of, and he just he he pops up every now and then and acts like a weirdo. Uh, he'll probably pop up in a little bit, Jill. Um, yes, I I agree with that, Katrina and and Cooper. If if the pattern includes a part where something's being sewn together or um or there's like a technique that's not really normal you know like it's a more advanced technique yeah i guarantee you there's going to be a video tutorial for that because i'm not going to go through all the effort to do you know i can't even get the pictures like that's the that's the other thing about video tutorials is if i do a video tutorial i guarantee you that i'm going to have a photo tutorial to go along with the videos. So that's really nice too. Yeah. No, no, I get, I get what you're saying, Lisa. I, I understand your comment there. Um, like if, if the video tutorials are like, it's like a Schrodinger's cat kind of thing. Like if you didn't know that there wasn't a video tutorial, would you need it? Yeah. I've been using this crochet hook. Oopsies. Every now and then you'll see me like pop off screen. It's because I've been using the same crochet hook so long now that it doesn't stay in the, like every now and then after like four or five rounds, you it'll kind of start, like this part will start to peel off of the crochet hook. So I have to like push the crochet hook back into the, into the handle. I need to just super glue it back, back together because I've just been like ripping, you know, like I've now crocheted probably like, a hundred projects with the same crochet hook, so it's just loose. We need to fix it up. Okay, so what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Okay, so we got three more rounds here. And then we're gonna switch over. <laughs> Cooper loves this song, that's so funny. You're so, that's so funny, Cooper. Thank you. Thank you, Tyke.
Okay, so what other ideas do we have for the face of our pumpkin, by the way? Also, how long have we been going for? Hey, we're already at 105 likes. We only need 20 more if you want to see what the next pattern is going to be. You want a little preview. Um, some people might actually know what the next pattern is going to be uh, based on just stuff. Okay, we've we only been going for like about an hour and a half, so we're about halfway through. We're gonna go ahead, by the way, we're gonna try to finish this up by um, 4 p.m. my time, which is another hour and a half. Uh, we'll, that actually should be pretty pretty easy to do. We're, we're pretty much at the, um, the end of the crochet part of our pumpkin, and then we need to like just shape it and stuff, and then we can add our face. So just letting you know, we're about at the halfway point. Yeah, about at the halfway point. Um, and there was something else I wanted to say about that. Nah, I can't remember. I do think this is Banjo Kazooie. Hamilton, my dude, how are you doing? I know, I know I could, Lisa, but I just want to fix this one. I like this crochet hook. Um. Hamilton, long time no see. I hope you're doing well, my dude. I still see pictures on on uh, Reddit all the time, and I'm like, I know where Hamilton is. <laughs> I was actually, I was debating playing Banjo-Kazooie the other day. Because it's now on the Nintendo Switch like e store, but I was just like, you know what, I need to finish Zelda. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. Yeah, I still need to work on Twilight Princess a lot. I haven't been playing it. I've been playing way too much Super Smash Brothers recently. Like seriously, my addiction is out of control. Every time I'm playing a video game, it's been Super Smash Brothers, and it's like, Lou, why? <sighs> But, you know, I just, like, let, I, I let, I'm really good at it. I'm really good, and it's really fun. Like, I really enjoy playing the, that game. And I, I think that another reason why I play it so often is because all I want to do is I just need, like, 30 minutes to play a game. You know, I don't want to sit there for, like, four hours playing a game because I need to work. Like, I have crochet that I need to make. I need to make patterns. I need whatever. And I get antsy. I just need, like a break so that's usually why i'm like okay i can do a 30 minute game sesh with super smash brothers and stop at any point i can stop whenever i want but really i've been playing it a little too much um yeah okay one two three four five six seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven okay so we got one more round here and then we're going to start closing it up uh, for our large size. Yeah, so it says to skip to round 26. Okay. Yeah, that's easy. That's easy. Oh, hey, what suggestions do we got for a face? Do we still, we're still looking at that. Let's see. How do I open that? Ah, oh, there we go. Question. Okay. Okay, Valkyrie says that we should do a the tongue out with the winky eye. Okay. Oh, how would we do that with a like a jack-o-lantern though? Yeah, we could do yeah, a skull. That's an interesting one. Yeah, give me more suggestions. If you got any other ideas for how you want the jack-o'-lantern to look, go for it. Um, we're looking for for any, as many suggestions as you guys got for me. Lisa, oh, okay. Lisa says, do I still find joy in crochet or is it more of a job? Absolutely, 100% I find joy in crochet. When I'm crocheting, I'm loving it. When I'm designing things, I absolutely loving it. I think the only part of the job, like of the, you know, 
running a crochet company now that I don't love is the businessy st side, like trying to figure out the money bit, like, okay, you know, like how much do I sell patterns for? Like, do I have to add all these patterns to a website? There's just all this like administrative aspect, answering a lot of emails, um, like handling membership codes and stuff. And like, you know, sometimes people have problems with their membership where they need to cancel it, but they can't figure out where on the website to cancel it. So every day I've got to like reply to a bunch of people and uh, keep checking the Etsy messages. It, like all the administrative parts of the business, I do not like. The crocheting parts of the business, I love. I even like doing the video tutorials uh, and editing the video tutorials. I really, really, really like that part a lot. It's just the administration bit takes a bit of a bit of a while. I didn't end uh, the Q&A, but um, yeah, I can see why that would be kind of tough here. You know what? Why don't I copy the ones that I really like from the Q&A and then I'll uh, restart it. So that way it's a little bit more fresh for you so you can see it a little bit easier. So give me just a second. Um, let me choose which ones I like here. Uh, Sharp mouth, I like that one. I really like punk in. Okay. We're going to end this QA and start it again. There we go. All right, I restarted the Q&A for you. Uh, should be a little bit easier for you to add your add new suggestions if you got new ideas. And I wrote down the um, the, the my top suggestions from that last Q&A. Did I ever play Glover? Oh, the one where you like roll on a ball with a little glove? I did uh, when I was a kid. Yeah, definitely Val Valkyrie Kitty. Yeah, I I do have um I do have someone that helps out with uh with emails a lot. Heather, um, she answers a lot of our emails now. Uh, I do have to like pop in every now and then and help out. Um, but that has like been a little bit easier. Uh, but yeah, I do need to get better at relinquishing you know the things that I don't really like to do. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, okay, that's going to be the end of our like height for the pumpkin. We actually have a pretty tall pumpkin this time. I think I maybe made it a little higher than I needed to, but whatever. Um, now we're going to start decreasing it down. How much more orange do we have? Oh, we have way more than enough. This is like we can make another mini pumpkin at least with this. Um, this is actually the last pattern in the season that uses our orange yarn though. So we'll have extra orange yarn for extra projects, which is gonna be kind of nice. We can make like dinosaurs with it or uh, really anything. We have a whole bunch of, uh, if you get the kit by the way, if you uh, purchase our new seasonal crochet kit, that's a great way to support the channel, you should do it. But if you do get it, um, it includes the membership and I let you know what patterns from the kit you can make like instead of the patterns that are designed for the kit. So that if you have extra yarn like this, you have extra patterns that you can make with it. Um, so it'd be kind of interesting to see what other orange patterns I can make using this yarn. Um, here we go. Jill, good question. Let me answer that in just a second. I just need to make sure I get that first decrease made here. There we go. Um, so Jill says that uh, they've been using 100% acrylic yarn uh, for all your animals. And you were wondering if that still works because you keep saying that cotton is the best. Yeah, okay, so when I say that cotton is the best, that doesn't mean that that's the only thing that you can use for your amigurumi. I mean, you know that. Uh, I personally don't like using acrylic yarn for a series of reasons. Um, the first, probably 
well, actually, they're the two main reasons that I don't use acrylic yarn are uh, for, yeah, the two main reasons are A, I don't like the idea of crocheting with plastic. Um, I like to avoid using plastic if I can, just because it's like, like cotton is recyclable, compostable. Like this is a natural fiber that is made in the world. Like this will, if I buried this in the ground, it would disappear after a while. Um, which is not really the case with acrylic yarn. Like that stuff is staying around. Um, cause it's made out of plastic. So that's one big reason. Another big reason why I don't really like using acrylic is that it hurts my hands. I don't like the feel of using acrylic yarn. Um, it squeaks, it hurts my hands, and I just don't like the look. It, it always ends up making my projects look like, for lack of a better word, cheap. They, it makes my pieces look like a little bit more cheap. Whereas the cotton, in my opinion, has always like, it's just elevated the um, quality of my projects. So it always has made my projects look way more crisp. Another big reason why I like using cotton over acrylic is because cotton uh, is very malleable. It's very like, it's almost like moldable. You can kind of like shape it to be the way that you want it to look. So like, if, for example, like, well, this is actually probably a pretty bad example. You know, let me show you like, um, here, I'll show you on this. If we had this sunflower, for example, and I wanted these, like I crocheted it with all these petals, but the petals were like, because of the way I crocheted it, they're like this. Well, if I'm using cotton, I can easily like, I can do stuff like this, you know, I could like bend it and it keeps its position because it's cotton and it's really like, it's moldable. It, which really, I think is really cool for crochet. Um, and it kind of like fixes a lot of issues that you have. If you're like having a difficult time, like shaping your patterns correctly, kind of fixes that a little bit. Um, and then probably the last reason that, well, I'm sure there's other reasons that I am not thinking about right now, but another big reason is that cotton makes it way, way easier to notice your yarn, to like see where your yarn is. It also doesn't pill as much, which is a completely different reason. And if you don't know what pilling is, one second, I'll talk about that. But um, it's like, look at how easy it is to see where each one of my stitches are. They're just like so crisp. So it just makes it really, it, I honestly find it easier to crochet with in general because you can see your stitches, you can see exactly where your stitches are um, and how they're designed and how they're built. But I totally get it. I think there's there's a decent amount of people out there that aren't really a big fan of crocheting with cotton or they just haven't tried it yet. Um, I highly suggest it. I think it's the best yarn to use for Ami uh, in my opinion. Uh, and then, yeah, the last one that I was gonna say was pilling. So pilling is when like um, you get little like, balls of fuzz on your on your yarn. Um, it mostly happens with like older projects that are, like have been around for a while. Um, this one has this one's made with wool. So if I ever want to use something that's a little bit squishier, I usually like using wool instead of acrylic because, like I was saying, it's like a natural fiber, um, but it still has that that aspect to it and it doesn't make it look like too cheapy um so this one's actually made with patent classic wool um i really like that one too but um you can kind of see this one doesn't it doesn't pill too much but there's like little fibers little balls of fiber that like start to appear on the outside especially when they've been handled a lot that doesn't really happen with cotton it happens with some cotton but it doesn't happen with our amigurumi cotton um because i think it's because it's like so tightly wound that it just doesn't, it doesn't get fuzzy. So, yeah. Um, is this my full-time job? It is, Amy. I quit in 2021. I quit my full-time job and started doing club crochet full-time. I think 2021, maybe 2020. So I think it's maybe been about three years. No, it couldn't be three. Maybe it has been three. Huh. I can't remember. Wow, what a risky move, by the way. Quitting my job in 2020. Yikes. Um, anyhow, uh, yeah, I, I, this is my full-time job, though. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, acrylic yarn is made with plastic. That It is plastic, straight up. Like, it's not just, like, made with plastic. That's all that it's made with is plastic. Um, same thing with polyester yarn. Polyester is plastic. Um, so, yeah, both of them are, are straight up plastic yarns. Um, do I use cotton for bigger projects? Sometimes. Uh, it depends on the project. If I'm making, if I'm trying to make a really big project, like, for example... Um, here, I'll switch to the cat cam real quick. See the giant um, ghost there in the corner next to the blanket? And the and the giant, um, what's that called? Sea star. Those ones are both made using uh, blanket yarn of some kind. Uh, the ghost is made with like even bigger. It's like almost like a rope yarn. Um, but the... the uh, sea Star is made using blanket yarn. So if I'm making like really big pa uh, really big projects that are almost like giant plushy sized and I w don't want to take forever to crochet it, I'll use blanket yarn and just use one of our like smaller amigurumi patterns to, to get it made. So it, does, it, it makes it a little easier. All right, we're almost done with the whole bit here is jack made with cotton yes jack is made with 100 percent cotton um i believe he's made with lily sugar and cream yarn uh i think that's what i i made him with originally that's so there's your problem also jill is acrylic yarn is like really cheap and easy to get so often what happens is that people buy acrylic yarn and then they just have like all this acrylic yarn forever um that they can't really get rid of. I'd say save a little bit of it of all the different colors that you want, but then start, just start like getting cotton. You know, every now and then get some cotton yarn, get a club crochet kit, there's an idea. Um, but yeah, get like, just start like replacing your yarn over time. And then eventually you'll just have this whole bunch of acrylic yarn that you're never gonna use anymore. And just donate that. Um, that's a great thing to donate to. Uh, there's a bunch of different organizations from, uh, I know near here, there's an organization called Art Trek that uses, um, they take donations of yarn to use for um, uh, art projects for kids. Uh, so that's a really good one. Even Goodwill will take your old yarn um, and find a good home for it, make good use of it. I know some of it is recyclable, so you might be able to recycle it. Uh, throwing it just in the trash, though, is not a great move unless it's really, really bad yarn. Um, yeah, so I, I suggest trying to donate it. I know there's a lot of options online. Uh, and if anybody has any good suggestions for where you can donate old yarn, uh, let us know in the chat. Okay, I think I have like one more stitch here for the second to last round and we can start stuffing our piece up. Now, there's a lot of stuffing I need to grab. So, let me go grab my stuffing real quick. But you can see it is a little understuffed, so we need to start filling it up. So let me go grab that. Here, I'll switch, I'll switch the camera for you so you can see where I keep my stuffing. You'll like this, I think. <laughs> A big old new, brand new bag of stuffing. Yeah, I usually keep my stuffing behind uh, the Jimbo throne. This is a brand new bag though. I guess I could have used, I should have used the stuffing from the kit. Oh well. I actually, the stuffing from the kit is really good stuffing. That's, I, I haven't been using it very much because I only have like so many little baggies of it. And they're really good to use for like when I want to go on a vacation or something. I can just like grab one of these little baggies of stuffing because they're flat, you know, because they, um, the company that I used for getting the stuffing made, they package it. Is it happening right here? They vacuum seal the stuffing in the kits so that they're like really, really easy and they, they can like get in, um, put in into the kits and stuff so yeah yeah 
That is the biggest unfortunate part here, Katrina. After all that talk about cotton yarn and not like not wanting to use plastic, the stuffing is polyester. It's a big bummer. I've been trying to look for an alternative option for a long time of like how, what kind of options I can use for stuffing outside of using polyester stuffing. But the co like using cotton stuffing, it's not, it's like not even close to affordable compared comparatively. Like it's so much more expensive to use that. What I have tried using in the past is using, um, uh, you can use like paper, uh, like like um, shredded paper for stuffing. Uh, and there are options online for like, like natural fiber stuffing and stuff. But unfortunately we do have to use polyester stuffing for the most part. Like there's just not, there's not really an affordable option yet. At least it, there hasn't been for me. It's just too, too expensive. Like the, the comparative cost. What I do like to do a lot of times though, is use old pillows. That's a great way to like kind of recycle in and of your in and of itself is that you can just use like old pillows and stuff for stuffing that helps. Um, and I also always use like my threads, like never ever throw this stuff away. This is always, always good for stuffing into your projects. I actually have a whole bunch of it right here that we can add to it too. Um, but yeah, I always keep my extra threads, extra just like, scraps and stuff and I always use that for stuffing is it easy or not to crochet Jack's mouth Jack was pretty hard for me to crochet that's why he doesn't have a pattern yet Tina is because he was really tough to crochet oh happy almost birthday Katrina who's oh and tag uh, uh, Tyke's birthday is coming up too When's your birthday, Ty? I think you told this last live stream, but I can't remember. I think this is almost enough stuffing. Um, what was I saying? I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay, I think that's probably enough on the stuffing front. Eh, we might want a little bit more. You'd be shocked at how much stuffing are in the little baggies for the seasonal crochet kits because they vacuum seal it. It's like an insane amount of stuffing is in those little baggies. Okay, 25 grams, I think is what it is. Maybe. Birthday's on the 28th. Oh my gosh, that's coming up. Oh, Katrina's is even sooner. Katrina's is this Sunday. Happy almost birthday, Katrina. Do we got new face suggestions? Let's see. Oh, Ivy. Ivy suggested an upside down face. That is very unique. I like that idea. All right, let's get back to uh, our last round of crochet here, and then we can sew it up and start our progress on the face. And we've got quite, we've got quite the vote to go with for the different options for our face. So we'll we'll look at that in just a second once we finish up our pumpkin itself. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna sew this closed, and then we'll choose the four options for the face. I'll throw it into a vote for us to vote on. And then we will, um, as I shape the pumpkin, we'll vote on what kind of face to make for our jack-o'-lantern. Hope I did not overstuff that. I totally might have. Yeah, I might have. You know what, I'm gonna pull a little bit of this stuffing out. Save it for later. Just because I just don't wanna overstuff this pumpkin because then the stuffing will show through and that's never something you want. A little bit better. Let's 
Oh yes, a happy, happy belated birthday, witchy boy. Okay, just a couple more stitches here. Let's make sure that this is what we like for a pump because it's going to be squished down pretty significantly by like that far. How squished was that one? Yeah, I think you know what? Maybe I will add a little bit more of our stuffing back in just a bit. Pro tip use the use the um, eraser of a pencil to stuff your piece up helps a lot. Okay. Alright, so now we need to sew this closed and then we'll vote on the options for our face. And... Chopsticks, yeah, chopsticks totally also work super good alternative i mean even like wooden skewers i like using those too sometimes okay all right we are closed up now i'm just gonna throw this on the side somewhere now i'm not going to cut this end just yet because just in case as we go around and add the shaping to our pumpkin I want to have like a little bit of extra yarn just so like if I need to tighten it even tighter I always like to do this curl the vine a little bit more it's a nice that's good that's good okay now let's vote on the different kinds of face options so let me go through give me just a second real quick Okay. Oh, good last second suggestion there, Susan. Okay. We're going to end the poll or end the Q&A. Votes are in. I, well, no, I'm sorry. The poll is open. So your choices for what kind of face we want to make for our jack-o'-lantern here is a vampire face. Pretty interesting idea. A goofy looking face. Not like literally goofy, but like, you know, something silly looking. A punkkin. So like looking like punk pumpkin. There's a fly. fast fly um a pumpkin or a skull uh you know like a skull um and not like literally a skull but like looking like it's like a bone bony kind of face i thought that kind of might be fun too um okay so go ahead and vote on that and we're going to sew uh we're going to add our 
um, shaping. We're gonna do our shaping. But also, grab this. We're gonna need this for drawing like how we want the face to look. And actually this pencil will work for our drawing part. But we'll get to that in a second though. In the meantime, let's get some orange yarn here and start shaping our pumpkin a bit. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right, I get to vote too. Oh, 100% witchy. If he's if it's going to be a pump, pumpkin, we're going to add piercings for sure. Um, but we'll draw it out and see what, what kind of options we have. So, let's start like this. Oops, stuff is popping out a little bit. There we go. Okay. All right, this part is always a little... Uh, tricky. I always like to line it up straight up. Just draw it straight up through. Let's go through this one. And I'll go across. curled on the inside. Okay. All right. Oh. Oh, thanks, Lisa. All right, then we're going to go across. And then one, two, yeah. Cross and then down like that. And through this side. Come out through right here. The one unfortunate part about adding, like shaping our pumpkin the way I do it, because it's like all no-so, is that this music's kind of sad. It is kind of sad. Yeah, we're in the we're in the calming music now. Let's go back to autumn. No, that's yeah. You know what? Sure, we'll do this one. Okay. Down. Tighten. So you got pull it tight so that it starts to shape the pumpkin in a little bit. And then go up into the next stitch. We will probably want to add a vine too. Not a vine, a leaf to our piece also. We'll probably get to that in a second also. I 
spider? What's our shaping going? Pretty good. Here. We just have one more here and then out through where our vine is. Like that. Is that for your last one? Three, four, five. Yep. Oh! Came off of our piece. I always do this, I cut way more yarn than I need for doing this, because I'm always afraid that I'm going to have too little amount of yarn. There we go. All the way down. Okay. We'll put this one a little tighter and double knot everything. One, two. Jeez. Not this stuff together. You know, we should probably save the leaf part because we might want to make a leaf different based on what kind of face we add. I don't think we'll have that big of a difference, but we'll see. Better be safe than sorry. Okay, let's cut this, stuff that in, like that. Cut this other end. That. All right, so we have our pumpkin crocheted. Let's go ahead and fix our little vine here. Look how it just naturally like kind of curves around like that. That's cute. Okay, what kind of face are we adding to our pumpkin? Pretty cute though. All right, what kind of face are we doing? Where is the bow? There it is. All right, what did one? Ooh, a vampire face. Ooh, wow, barely one too. Pumpkin, pumpkin was very close. Okay, we got a vampire face that we want to add. All right, so let's draw this out. Let's do a few different options for us before we go and cut our um, felt out. So, if you want a vampire face, that means we definitely want it, like, let's start with the smile. So we're definitely gonna want, like, a big smile like this. And then we wanna do teeth cut out, you know? Big teeth. So, we'll ha so that's definitely the first option, is that we want big teeth there. Do we want lower teeth like this? Yeah. Probably, right? That looks kind of cute too. Okay, so that's gonna be the mouth option. Something like that. The face, it's, or the eyes, I think we should give it like, maybe like this. You know, like he's happy, like he's excited to eat your, your flesh. Like that, maybe? And then for the nose, What's a vampire nose look like? Do they even have noses? Oh, you know what? We should do this for the nose. You know, two like two dots, like a like like a vampire nose, or we could even do it like this, like kind of like a pig nose, and we can do maybe we could do like little wings, 
on the side. I don't know, what do we think about that? I don't know if I like the pig nose. It doesn't really read vampire to me. So let's try that again. Uh, let's start with, I like the idea with the eyes a lot. I was also kind of thinking of using some yellow felt in addition to the black felt to add some kind of like coloring to it. So I want to try that. Um, ooh, there we go. See exactly what uh, Ty just said. Vampire eyes are usually red. So we can do like black with like the red in there. Make the leaf sparkle, okay. Okay, we like the vampire bat with the snout. You know what, let's do a vote then. Do we want the, uh, let's see. Um, nose options. Do we want a vampire bat? Nose or Personally, I'm voting on just the two, like the two slits. Like, so I'm thinking like, it's like this, you know? And then like this for the eyes with like maybe some like red right there in the eye. Um, the nose, I, I kind of think it would be cuter to do, or like more vampire-y to do something like that. And then do Mouth, mouth, teeth, teeth, and then maybe we could do some like extra red felt or something like that. We'll add the red felt after we do all the black felt stuff. Now I know positively that I'm gonna want to do the mouth the way, like like that. I like that mouth a lot. So especially for a vampire. So we'll, I'm gonna get started by cutting out the mouth while you guys vote for what we wanna do for the nose. But I'll choose the mouth and maybe the eyes too. Um, and then let you guys choose the rest of that stuff. Okay, so for the mouth, I think this whole section is pretty good. Might be a little long. Let's see. Um, what side do we want the... I think this looks kind of cute because then we could have like this like kind of covering the eye a little bit like he's got like an emo face maybe or we could do it over here actually yeah that's better right here yeah okay so we'll do it right here it's pretty good cut off like that much okay fold this in half this is how i usually do um the mouth so that they're like even on both sides. I'll do something like this. And then I'll cut out like the half crescent shape. Like that. So now we have like the start of the mouth. That might be a little long. Actually, you know it might not be a little long. But you know what I think would be cool is if we give the mouth the top of the mouth a little bit of a curve also. Like that. Hopefully that wasn't too much. No, yeah, like that. That's exactly what I was thinking. So it's more of a smile, kind of creepy smile too. And then we want vampire teeth now the vampire teeth part, we want almost all the way down to the bottom so that they're really pronounced, right? So we want them like, hopefully this doesn't mess with our design too much. You know, cause we still want, oh, ooh, 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 that was a close one. All right, There's one, we'll do this one right here. Ooh, that one was a little low. Uh, I, I don't think it'll be too much of a problem, but we'll find out when it comes to the needle poking part. Like that. 
This one might this might be a tricky mouth to add. I might have cut that a little bad. Oof. Hope I didn't mess that up too much. Let me straighten it out. And we'll do two lower ones also. Okay, there's the mouth. Put that somewhere. I don't think, I don't know if I like this side of the mouth though. Well, actually, you know, when I curve it like that, it kind of fixes it. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. Okay, so that's our mouth. And we might add some red felt afterwards, but we'll see about that. Um, the eyes, I like the, the half circle eyes. I think that's a cute, um, you know, it still makes it somewhat friendly, still more pumpkin-y. So we'll go ahead and cut out just a little section here and make some eyes. And we'll also do a fold. Well, do we need that? Nah, try just like this. I just, we'll, we'll just try freehanding it. Like that. And then a curve on the bottom would be nice too. Like that. So that's what I'm thinking for the eyes. And then maybe we'll add some like additions to it to make it more like evil looking, like a little red dot in there or something like so that it glows a bit. But I actually really like that a lot. So I'm gonna cut this out again, our felt. Pointy eyebrows, okay, maybe, yeah. tilted in a little bit so it looks a little bit more evil. And it's kind of cool that the, the eye kind of like goes with the mouth too. So it tilts into the mouth. Yeah, like that maybe. I mean, that alone looks really cute actually. I, I, I actually just like that alone. But let's see what you guys chose for the nose. Oh, it's a tie. It's a tie. So I gotta wait for a second. We got we got a tie. We need one more vote. Someone vote on the nose. Do you want the vampire bat nose or do we want the slits for the nose? Or no nose. Uh Jill, while we're waiting on that vote, Jill, uh what? Uh you want to know what kind of crochet hook to use with cotton. I suggest pretty much 90% of the time, if you're especially if you're using worsted weight cotton yarn, you're gonna wanna use this, a G uh, four millimeter crochet hook. That's usually the size hook that I like to use. Um, you're right, 3.5 millimeters is also really good for the nose. I mean, for the for the, um, the crochet hook too. So you can use either one, 3.5 or four millimeter. I personally like four millimeter. I like to go a little bit bigger because I, that way I don't crochet it too tightly, but all right, vote is over. We got two more votes for the vampire bat nose. So we're gonna try that one. 
If we really hate it, I'll make a, an executive decision, but I think that's a good idea. I think so. Okay, I actually think this extra belt will be good enough. It's almost actually in good shape, too. So the first thing is we want to go... Um, so the first thing we want to do is let's just cut off the bottom part. Like that. And... Um, a little high up, too. Okay, we'll go... We'll start by just getting the general shape, and then I'll cut out the... the nostrils. I think what we can do, though, is kind of, like, tilt it up like that. See? And then we'll go, we'll do that on the other side too. Actually, you know what? Maybe if I fold it in half, I can just replicate that. Yeah, like that. It's kind of like a, like a, you know, it's kind of like garlic, which is kind of funny. See, so I'm thinking like this, and then we'll round out this top part. But I like it having like a very tip, little like outward rounded tip to it. Okay, do we like that for the shaping, like size wise? That's, yeah, actually, that's pretty good. Okay, now here's the question do we want to go up twice with that, or do we want to cut the holes out of the nose? No. Let's start by just cutting the holes out. I might not be able to do it with the holes in it though, so it's worth a shot. Gotta be careful here though. The thing is like I don't know how much detail I can possibly get with the needle felt thing. Like eventually it's kinda like a tattoo, you know? Like you can only do so much. I mean, actually, tattoos can get pretty detailed, but it's going to blend in a, a, a little bit, too, so we got to be careful. It's pretty good. Okay. All right, let's try this other side. Is the other side it needs to be a little higher up? Yeah, actually, that's pretty good. Okay, like that. All right, what do we think? That looks pretty vampire y. If I saw that, I'd be like, Oh, yeah, I get what you're going for. You're like a vampire, <laughs> right? Maybe we could do a little bit more open with the nose. Just a, just barely, though. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to cut out just a little bit more on the inside part. Just barely, though. You really want to be careful with this. I don't even know if that's going to make a difference. I like that. Actually, I really like that. Okay, so the hardest part is gonna be adding the mouth itself. So I think I'm gonna start with the eyes and then we'll get to the mouth. Or, and the eyes, nose, mouth. I think that's the way we'll do it. So I'm gonna actually peel the mouth off for a second. We'll place that to the side back here. Uh, and I'm gonna take the 
nose off for a second too. We'll place that up here also. And uh, let's just start needle felting on the eyes. Now this is probably one of my favorite parts uh, to do because you just get to stab it a bunch. So I'm gonna use this fancy little needle here. If you haven't, again, check out the new video tutorial. It's out, <laughs> I'm threatening you with a needle. Check out the new video tutorial. Um, it's out uh, now, you can find it. Uh, there should be a pinned comment at the top here um, or just go to my channel and check out the new video tutorial that shows how to do needle felting. Um, and if you haven't yet, please check that video out and give it a like. Uh, it could really use some uh, some love and attention today. So please give it some, some love. Um, okay, so, yeah, like that, like that, okay. Let's go ahead and we'll just start needle felting this part on. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to hear this part, but what's really cool about doing this with specifically for a jack-o'-lantern is that it kind of sounds like you're carving into a pumpkin, which is kind of fun. I don't know if you can hear it. See, so what I'm basically doing here, and don't worry about my hands, I'm okay. I'll zoom in a little bit. Let that go. I'm being very careful. I do not want to stab my hands, but I'm basically starting with all the little corners and the sides of the eye first. And every time I stab this in, I'm pulling some of the fibers from the felt and pushing them into the fibers of the crochet. That's how this sticks to it. And usually pretty stick, it sticks pretty well. I'm gonna prob probably try to avoid looking too much at the chat right now, by the way, just because I don't wanna cut, I don't wanna stab my hand. Once we got like a basic like positioning, good it's already pretty sturdy on there um uh once you got a basic positioning like this um uh you just need to start stabbing the inside of it um ivy how secure wait what, how secure is this is using needle felting to attach the facial features can it come undone it can come undone but it's pretty secure um especially if you're using if you use something other than cotton it's even more secure um but it the more you stab it the more secure it'll be so it's kind of like it depends on how much effort you want to put into it but you see how like i'm just stabbing away and the more i do it you can kind of see how the felt itself is like kind of disappearing a little bit especially around the edges because i'm stabbing them Stabbing it actually into the fibers of our crochet. It's pretty good. I like that, actually. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's just make sure we have the nose on there. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Stab that black felt back in there, too. Um, all right, next one is right here. Do the same placement, especially for the corners so that they are evenly placed with the other side. Are you as scared as I am about stabbing my hand? I know I'm scared because it hurts really bad and I will bleed, which I'm sure this pumpkin would love, but I would not. Tilt up just a bit like that. There we go. Okay. Okay. 
start. Alright, now let's just start jabbing it. There we go. Okay, I like those off. I like the off. All right, now we're going to add the nose. What time is it? Uh, we have about 30 minutes at the most uh, for the live stream, uh, um, Tig. It's like a mini game? Yeah, it is. Okay. Nose time. This is one I actually am kind of most worried about the nose placement. So I just don't want to goof it up. Mouth will go like there. Yeah, I just don't want to mess up the nose. That's pretty good though, actually. We'll go with that. Alright, so I'm going to start with the top of the nose. Which I know I want right here. bottom of the nose will I know I want right there. I'll follow the edging. So I'm going to try to like fix that a little bit. Yeah, that was pretty good. Still, it's a little bit further over than I was hoping, but that's okay. Alright, now we want to get the edging of the nose. Center a little bit side. You know what I like about carving a pumpkin with crochet is that you can never do this nose shape in a real pumpkin because this these parts wouldn't hold on to anything. Right? I think that makes sense. You want to get a little bit more space in there. Super Smash Bros. song? No, this is Zelda. Okay. No, it's got a little funky, but it's not too bad. Open it up a little bit.
this side right here that's just funking me out a little bit. That's not bad, though. Maybe we could just do that on there. What happens if I do that? No. It's too dangerous. Okay. There's our nose. How are we feeling about that? I just wish this part was more pronounced. That's pretty good. Okay, last part is the mouth. Whew, okay. I'm worried about this part. I, I'm not gonna lie. Whew. The crunchy noises, you can hear it. Okay, cool. It is very satisfying. Um, all right, so we wanna go around the odd, around the odd. Um, let's start with the corner of this side of the mouth because that's the one that I'm most worried about it falling apart. Start doing this side right here. Actually, no, let's do the bottom edge. That. Okay. Actually, already is pretty secure. Obviously, we're going to come back and dot it a bunch, though, too. Okay. Other edge, we want the other corner of the nose, so right here. We'll go across it. Just going to step right down the center a little bit. I should have done more edging first. Can you see on the screen? Yeah, you can. The mouth is getting a little crooked. That's what I meant. Like, it's just so, it's very flimsy mouth. So I gotta be very careful as I stab. Or else it kind of like gets crooked. I mean, it doesn't actually look that bad crooked though. So, that's good. But I still wanna fix it if I can. Okay, do this side now. Pretty good as far as like the shaping goes for the mouth. 
Now it's time to just go crazy with it and start just stabbing it away. All right, see you later, Twiz. Thanks for joining. Yeah, we use our own brand of yarn called uh, Club Crochet Cotton, uh, Amigurumi Cotton Yarn. That's our that's our newest uh, brand of yarn. I plan on doing more kinds of yarn eventually too. But for now, those are our brands. That's our one brand. For some reason, this is making me really hungry. I think this sounds like I'm eating chips or something. Get that fiber out of there. Okay, the center is pretty attached. I'm trying to do a little bit better job on this side. You can see how it's like lifted a little bit. Not stabbed enough. It's also about time that I replace this needle. I've been a little bit more able to grab onto the fibers. Not just yet, but probably after this project just because like the little clippy parts that grab onto the felt are starting to wear down a bit just a bit it's not really that much I'm starting to get tired. That's pretty good. I'm gonna make the teeth just a little bit more obvious. Mouth is just about done. I'm just trying to like really make sure it's secure because it's so flimsy that I really want to make sure as much fibers as I can are into the cotton. Okay. I actually don't know if I want to try adding red to the eyes. I think it might mess it up. Because it looks so good. What do you guys think? Do you think I should try adding color? I know I, One thing I do want to definitely add is we want to do some leaves. And I think doing little bat wing leaves would be really, really fun. Um, you can get the needle felting tool on uh, at um, pretty much any fiber store. Um, they're also available on like Amazon and stuff. Uh, Katrina, yeah, uh, Goblin was supposed to be up this week, but I just didn't have time when I was doing like this whole tutorial. Um, I had to like prioritize something, but I'll try to get it in by next week for you. Okay, Katrina. Hill Simp, welcome. Nice new thumbnail. I like it. And hello, Samantha. How are you? Okay, so how do we like this so far, by the way? We like that. Do we want to add, try adding coloring? Or are we good with 
it just being black. I kind of think we're good with how it is, but I don't know. What do you think? Do we add like lighting? Like, do we add yellow here? I'm afraid it'll take away from it. Oh, cool, Hilsim. I really hope you like the kit. Um, please let me know uh, what you think of it. I, I really hope you enjoy it though. Um, okay, well, let's do, I got a good idea in the meantime while I see what you guys think about uh, adding the, um, adding coloring for the needle felting. I kind of think it looks really, really good as is, and I don't really want to mess with it, but I don't know if you guys feel strongly uh, a different way, that's totally cool too. Now for the, uh, for the wings, Here's my idea. We're gonna, I'm gonna use the wing pattern from the miniature dragon. So there's like a dragon bonimal pattern. And they've got, I've got this really cute little tiny wing pattern that I think might be really fun to do with our green yarn. So I pulled up the pattern. Let's go ahead and give that a shot and see how it goes. One. I haven't made one of these in a while though, so we'll see. Two, three. One. Okay, so let's see how this goes. And then I'll see if we want to make two of these. Okay, and sing crochet one into this last one. All right. I remember now. This might be too tiny for the wing that we want, but it does look pretty cute. Let's see. Okay, so this is the option that I'm thinking for our little wings. What do we think? Would that be cute? Like down here or even up here? Two little ear-like wings, basically? Maybe over down here? I don't know. What do we think? Is this too silly? Does that kind of make it a little too ridiculous. I don't know, what do you guys think? My mom thinks we should just do leaves. Hi mom! My mom is in the chat, she's Mary. Katrina likes these little wings. Cosmo thinks they're too small. They are pretty tiny. But it's kind of cute. But yeah, they are really tiny. Zoe also thinks they're a bit too small. Maybe I should listen to my mom and just do a leaf. Regular old leaf. Um, we can try larger wings though too. Um, let's see. I think I have a bat pattern on here with bigger wings. Uh... Not, I don't want to do like the big wings. Like I have this, you know, we could do like these kind of wings, but these are, that, I think that's, well, that's actually, that's not too bad. That could work. You know, like that. Now, I, I kind of think that my one's right. I think we should maybe just stick with leaves. I don't know. One wing shaped, oh, oh, you know what? We do have larger wings. I do have a, a larger wing pattern. Let's try this one. Oh, one second. Once need, I need to log in. Okay, 
back to that pattern because for some reason it logged me out. Okay, let's try these larger, slightly larger ring wings and see how that goes. Um, I haven't made these ones in a long time though, so we'll see. Another wing option though. Chain eight, one. Eight. Okay. This doesn't look like it's going to be any, like very much bigger than the other wings. And then single crochet one. Let's see though. Okay, secondary wing option. So here is the first one. You can see it's, it is actually a little bit bigger. It's not very much though, it's like barely bigger. It's more curvy though. But yeah, we were, someone was saying like, maybe we should do the, try the wings, like two wings up at the top. So it actually looks like the stem. a little too busy up there I think especially with how long we made the vine okay, let's let's try to keep the vine like right here just for a second so I can see what it looks like actually I'm just gonna pin it down just so that we keep it out of our way as we look at our options so it would be like this it should be like sewn on to like that Imagine another one right here. Like that. Eh, that's too busy, right? It doesn't even look like it'd be like, what is going on with the top of his head, right? Yeah. I don't think I like that. I think we should just go with a regular leaf. Because it would look like this at the top, and that just looks classy. What do we think? What do we think? What do we think? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think we should just go with a regular leaf. I'm gonna make that. I'm gonna make that decision. The wing option is just. It's just not working the way I want it to. Um, where's the pumpkin pattern? There it is. Okay. Yeah, we'll just do regular. We'll just do a regular leaf. I think it's just a little bit classier. And they're looking too goofy. Yeah, I totally agree. Okay. Back down here to the leaf. Okay, so this is the knot. Okay, and hey, this is gonna be the last part for our live stream today. Um, but don't worry. We're gonna be live again next week. 
next uh, Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. What are we making next Friday? I can't remember. I think it's a ghost. No, it's a candy corn. We're making candy corn next week. Yes, I think. Six, seven. Oh, actually, that might work. Two leaves to represent two wings. Would this leaf, but but would these leaves be too big? One. Yeah, that actually that might be a good idea. That might be a good idea, Zoe. I'll, I'll try that out. Well, we'll try one and we'll see what it would look like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ten, ten, twelve. Fish Got it. Yeah, we'll, 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 let's make this one leaf first and then we'll see. Maybe um, we'll do two leaves though. Yeah, I think it is candy corn too, Jill. Uh, and hey, by the way, Jill, thank you for opening the emails. Uh, I have been working really hard on like getting my email stuff set up a little bit better. So it makes me glad to know that some people are still checking out the email and actually reading what I write. Sometimes I'm like, I don't think anybody's really reading any of this. I think they're just kind of like looking at the pictures and they're like, all right, I'll go check out the live stream on YouTube. But it's good to know that you open it and check it out and stuff. That makes me that makes me happy to know that my time is not wasted on on like writing out everything on the email. Two and three. I, I wrote that at like three AM too, so it was there was a high likelihood that I was gonna goof it up, so I'm glad I didn't. Pico. Oh, that's cool. I'll add, you know what? That's super cool to know. I'll, I'll try to add more like little Easter eggs in the emails for you. Celia. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Triple. Double. Oh, and you know what? You guys got this video over um, 125 likes. So I'm going to show you also what is going to be in or what like a preview of what the next pattern is going to be. And some of you guys might have already seen this before, but I'm pretty proud of it. So I'm excited to show you. Let me finish up the our piece first and it'll be like the last thing I show you before we leave. Okay, now we're working into these back loops. That. Double. Okay. Half double, double, okay, yeah, triple. Thanks so much, Jill. I love it. That's awesome. Was this your first stream then? I'm sorry, Jill. I called you Jill. Um, uh, Celia. And then it goes triple, double, triple. Okay, after we do the first one, the second one probably will be a lot easier. Triple, double, and another triple. Ah, it's hard to get into that back loop. Don't want to work with me. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, and three. Yeah, okay, that's looking good. Okay. So this is what one leaf would look like. It, we're definitely going to sew this one on. But the position will matter based on if we want to put two or one. Okay, so here's one leaf. It would be like this. So imagine, if you will, there is one leaf and there is one leaf. Do we like the idea of doing two leaves or just the one leaf? Let me go ahead and ask in a poll. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go with that, but we'll see. One, four, two leaves. One, two. Okay. I'm kind of inclined just to do the one. But if we did two, it would be like... Regardless, I'm definitely going to add one leaf and one leaf to the side. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this one on, and then we'll make the decision if we want to add the other one afterwards. Ooh, close, close vote here. Close vote. Every vote matters. Right there, right, right, right here. Okay. Okay, this, so there's one leaf. The two leaves might look like hair, but it could be kind of cute. hard time making decisions at the end here. Alright, let's go ahead and end the vote. Oh no, it's 50-50! Alright, that means it's up to me. Okay. Well, first off, let's double knot this and cut it close. Got 50-50 right when I hit done. Love this. I love this part though. We could always put this over here that kind of like 
evens out the, the sides. I don't know. Oh, my mom says we should do one more, but it's small. Like a tinier leaf over here. Just as an, just as a, like to get an idea of what it looked like. Let's put these together just to kind of like squint, like that. Ah, uh, that's too busy. That's too busy. We're gonna go with one. I like it. I'm making an executive decision. And we're going with the one leaf. And do we want anything else? I think that's great. I think we're good. I'm happy. What do you guys think? You happy? I hope so. Let's see, if we did this, let's, let's add just like one little red drop of the pin here. What happens if I do this? <laughs> no, it doesn't really. I, I was like, maybe it'll look like blood. It does not. Okay. That's pretty good, though. I'm happy. All right. Now, the last thing to do before we go is I promised you I'd show you what the next pattern that's coming out is going to be. And now, I'm going to kind of show you two here because it's kind of like a double pattern. So thank, first off, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're still around, sticking around, thank you so much for watching. That means you're like a super fan and you rock. If you haven't yet, please like this video down below, subscribe to the channel, all that fun stuff. Please, please consider getting a Club Crochet membership or the new seasonal crochet kit. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba. It is available now. It is at a discount during the season. Uh, and it's a really good way to support the channel. Whether or not you want to crochet all uh, Halloween patterns or you want to make Christmas patterns or you want to make patterns that have nothing to do with any holidays, this kit can make it all. So please consider getting a Club Crochet membership and a Club Crochet kit. Use the code HOOKED at checkout to get free shipping on your free first kit. Um, okay, so that's, the, that's that dealio now. Uh, and finally, let's look at uh, some preview patterns that are coming out soon. Um, uh, okay, so the first one, a lot of people know my perfect, like the, the cute little hearts that I crochet. Um, let's see, do I have one right here? Okay, so I was looking at this crocheted heart the other day and I was like, you know what? I bet you if I just like extended it and figured out a way to do it on the other side, I could make a bone look at that look at it's like a cartoon bone isn't that cute it's so cute i'm super proud of it so this is the uh next pattern that's coming out uh it's pretty soon honestly i i've, I've got it almost done the trick is that i'm adding an additional part to this so that it works not only as just like a bone that could be a fun toy for like a like a dog or or um or just like a cute little amigurumi bone or making it for Halloween. But I also thought, you know what would be really fun? What if I added on the outside of the bone a turkey leg? So the next few patterns that are coming out um, is going to be like a combo pattern showing how to make a bone and how to make a turkey leg. And actually this has a bone on the inside. I pulled it out once uh, and then it took me forever to get it back into the piece. So I'm not going to take it out, but there is a full size regular bone inside of this as well. So that's kind of, kind of fun. Um, so yeah, that is to say thank you for getting all the likes. I hope you guys like these new patterns. They're coming out soon as well as all the new mini Gurumi patterns and stuff like that. So I'll be working on this one this weekend. Um, but even sooner than that, what will be available is our new uh, miniature skull patterns which look like I still got my cauldron filled with little skulls and now I have our little candy corns in there but here's our little skulls this will be coming out next week um, as well little tiny miniature skulls only 40 stitches long so keep a lookout for that um, thank you guys so much again for watching uh, I hope you guys enjoy I almost just dropped the whole cauldron of 
that was a close one. Um, thank you guys so much again for watching. Please like and subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, I feel like there was something else I needed to, to show you or talk about. I had the thought like right as it fell. I was like, oh, wait, don't forget to say this. I forgot. Possible pizza. Happy hooking. And I'll see you guys next week. Because I can't think of what the heck the other thing that I wanted to say was. Oh! I wanted to add these to the pot. That's what it is. I almost forgot. Cooper, thank you much for your support. Thank you so much. Halloween whale adding to the pot. Tina, thank you so much for your support, adding your little top hat whale, or octopus, to the additions too. Just a few more. It looks like we only got like maybe a room for five, maybe six more miniatures to go in this. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Close to a, a giveaway. And oh, oh, I do remember what one more thing was. I wanted to show, I wanted this person, this person I'd say in quotes. <clears throat> Tina? Hello? Tina, are you there? Can you hear me? Maybe if I talk a little closer to my mic. That tasted terrible. What have you been putting on that mic? Uh, like grease and glue and stuff like that. That's disgusting. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Pasta la pizza, happy hooking, and I'm gonna see you next week. You're going to be here next week? I'm pretty sure I'm just going to be there next week. Nah, I'm going to be there too. All right, bye. <laughs> You're welcome, Tino. <laughs> bye, Fossil Pizza. Happy hooking in. Oh my gosh, stop. No, you hang up first. <laughs>